Read more of the adventures of Eddie Barnes in A Walk with Elves. Hello there. If you've been watching some of the videos on this channel, you'll know that occasionally I touch on the subject of old age and how old I am and all that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't happen that often, thankfully. But the other day I noticed, that just in the bathroom, and uh, I noticed one of my earlobes is getting floppier than the other one. Um, I mean, the earlobes are generally a little bit floppy, but this one is just as it should be, or, or it's how it's always been, whereas this one has just suddenly become more floppy. And I, I really don't know why. I suspect it's probably some hitherto unknown uh, facet of old age that all the old folks haven't been telling us. Something to look forward to, extreme floppiness in the earlobe department. <laughs> but, um, I was looking at my video channel stats the other day and I noticed that the vast majority of viewers to this YouTube channel are aged between 55 and 64. This isn't so much a YouTube, it's not, it's not so much a video channel as an old folks club. And to that end, perhaps I should be doing videos on how to plan your toilet breaks when out rambling, or how to eat your chicken soup without dribbling. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> um, Today we've just got a short three mile adventure on the Forth and Clyde Canal. We're going to end at Port Dundas and we're starting here. The Forth and Clyde Canal was completed in 1790 and built to allow the passage of goods between Bowling on the Firth of Clyde and Grangemouth on the Firth of Forth, effectively linking the Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea, which meant ships didn't have to sail all the way around the top of Scotland. The Kelvin Aqueduct, once considered to be one of the largest built since Roman times, carries the canal over the River Kelvin and was so huge and impressive that tourists once flocked here just to look at it.
you get a real feeling of times past days long ago at this section of the canal and it's the five locks at Mary Hill the five locks allow the canal to essentially drop down at a small hill about 40 foot in size from one level to another and in addition to the locks there's also a, what was once a dry dock and shipbuilding yard just over there Well, this is where the canal passes over Mary Hill Road and if you had been here in the late 19th century uh, apart from the fact that I don't think this road was called Mary Hill Road then and you'd looked just straight along there you would have seen the vast expanse of uh, the Mary Hill Barracks where the, the Wineford housing estate is just now and just on the other side of the road from that was um, G and J McLachlan's Castle Brewery. A good place to have a brewery, I would think. Well that's Fir Hill Football Stadium, just at the side of the canal here, home to uh, Partick Thistle since uh, 1909.
never been a great football person, to be honest. As a guy, you're expected to like football, but I just, I've never really liked it. It possibly stems from, I remember at school when I was told to go on goals. And from what I remember, I think the number of goals that I let in went well into double figures. <laughs> but uh, I, I just, I don't understand the game, you know. BBC Radio Scotland, just on a few occasions recently, I've heard them talk about, they've used the phrase quadruple treble or treble quadruple or something, I don't know, quadruple treble, I mean, what is that? <laughs> but any sport that uses a phrase quadruple treble, it's not a sport I should really be interested in, I don't, really, I don't want to know what it means, so don't dare drop me a comment, okay? Now, just in case you're wondering what these things are, this is where the elves that look after the canal live. Yeah. So be very quiet when you pass by and so as you don't disturb them. Well, we're quite near Port Dundas, it's just around the corner. Um, and along the canal there's a few things that give you a bit of history about the area. In particular at this end of the canal, there's a few maps on the wall and information panels, which is very interesting. This one indicates that this is the site of the Old Basin Tavern. And this, that's a lovely photograph. Um, and while it, it's almost correct, it's actually not quite correct because this wasn't the site of the Old Basin Tavern. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by virtue of maps and old photographs. Um, this section here between the canal and a bend on this track here was once called Old Basin, named after the, the Old Basin on the canal there. And after that bend, from there down to Apostle Road was called Baird's Bray. And um, there is quite clear proof on, on late Victorian uh, Ordnance Survey, a place name documents, that Baird's Bray ran from Apostle Road to the Old Basin Tavern. So this wasn't the site of the Old Basin Tavern because th this was uh, a sh very short row of properties. Um, again, I'll show you a photograph in a minute. You can see that the remains of an old shop selling cigarettes. Um, but the Old Basin Tavern was actually at the bend, just a short distance away. In this Ordnance Survey name book dating to the late 1850s, you can see the Old Basin Tavern, an old established public house at the head of Baird's Bray, and you can also see the adjacent Great Canal Brewery, established in 1823. Baird's Bray is accurately described as a steep bray leading from the Postle Road and terminating at the Old Basin Tavern. In this 1894 town plan, we can see a public house, PH, at the top of Baird's Bray, 
and not where the information panel is closer to the canal. This older map dating to 1858 confirms that this is the Old Basin Tavern. Note the two sets of stairs. In this photograph, probably dating to around the 1960s, we're looking across the canal towards the short row of buildings called Old Basin. And here's that row again. This slightly older photo, dating to 1955, again shows Old Basin. And at the end we can see some stairs where the Old Basin Tavern is located. And so this is where that little bend in the track is. This was the top of Baird's Bray. And right here was where the old Basin Tavern really used to be. And I also wish I could go inside for a beer right now. <laughs> Even I am slightly out here. The masonry corner on the left is the corner of the building that once contained the Old Basin Tavern. So that public house was in fact just on my left and not straight ahead. And here it is in its heyday. This is Port Dundas and all these buildings were once warehouses and they're now all housing and you know it's it's a thing but as you come along the canal and you compare that with old maps there was just an, an awful lot of industry uh, running alongside the canal, all sorts of industries, iron foundries and stuff, <laughs> it, it, mostly they've all gone and, uh, and their place just seems to be either vacant spaces or, or housing and given that we've lost so much industry, I, I, I do wonder what uh, all the people who occupy all the properties at the side of the canal actually work at. Because we're getting to the stage where automation is gradually taking over from human involvement. And as time goes by, we will see more unemployment. And people will be expected to sign on at the job centre and somehow feel guilty at not working. But in actual fact, it's simply the march of progress and it's not their fault. And I do wonder what we're all going to do in decades to come. Where the money will come from. Because invariably as we get more automation and more unemployment, it is the people who own a lot of these businesses who will get rich. And all the people who aren't working will probably relatively speaking, get poorer. I really don't know what the answer is. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> as I say, this is Port de Das. And there was, as well as all these warehouses, there was just a lot of industry. I think there is still a distillery up in the hill behind these warehouses. And at one time, there was actually the largest distillery in the world this year. And, uh, you know, again, I'll show you a few maps, a few uh, photographs, and uh, 
We'll try and imagine how it might once have been. And uh, from here, the canal kind of dribbled onwards a little bit. And you can still see that extra little bit round the corner. Uh, and there was a link between this spur of the Forth Clyde and Clyde Canal and the Monklands Canal, which was built to carry coal from a lot of coal fields. Uh, from here, it could have been transported anywhere. So, I'm Eddie Burns, take care, and I'll see you again. Come all you noble sailors, and listen to my song. If you pay attention, I won't detain you long. It's all about a ship and crew, what of them did befall? A guy away to foreign parts on the port and das canal. The captain was a brave old man, he had a noble crew. But being short of a maiden cook, he didn't know what to do. To loafers who were standing by said, we'll join your ship and all. So they sailed away that very day on the port and ask him. Sail for many days till a dreadful storm arose. The mate he threw off his big coat and up aloft he goes. He thinks the ship is going down, but she is off her course. So he cries to one to jump ashore and try and stop the horse. They all declare they'd never see home And one of them fell over And loud for help to bow For up to the knees and model Was he in the port and gas Hand. The night it was so awful dark He could not see the land He put his hand up to his mouth And loudly there did call A sail, a sail, a captain cried On the port and ask him now When the passengers included here That help was near at hand they buckled up the trousers and waded to the land. They all arrived that night at their own native shore, and each one took a 